Oh man, if there is one question I have gotten more than any other question since I've started this channel, how do I get a developer team? How do I hire people if I am broke? Well, from one broke person to another, try this. Hey guys, and welcome back. Today, I have to share a little tactic that I have been using more and more often which is so nice. Most developers out here, whether they're doing commissions or not, are all trying to make their own game. And of course, having money to make your own game is a huge W and makes things a little bit easier, especially when it comes to finding certain people. However, if you don't have money, take this tip right now. I have been doing this quite a bit actually, and we're gonna put it into practice today. We'll simply call it skill sharing okay and no i'm not talking about the website skillshare i'm talking about if i can do something that you can't and you can do something that i can't why don't we just trade our uh, our talents now i'm actually doing this two times within the dream game itself number one is for panda he's the one who has scripted the bike system so far and we've agreed that he'll get the game into an alpha state and a satisfying bike system, and I will build his whole game. Which he already has, he just wants it completely rebuilt and all that kind of stuff. Very, very awesome deal for both of us. The one that we came into today, my friend Hutto has been making all of the VFX for this game. Check it out, if we do a wheelie and scrape the titanium, boom, we have that. There's even more VFX over here, if they, uh, if they load in. They definitely don't, so we will check them out in studio, guys. We have crazy particles for like some nos boost we have an exhaust fire particle we have the scrapes we have the burnouts we even have a very cool backfire which i'll do right there just like that and as you can see very cool vfx for the game he has charged me absolutely nothing in return, today, we're gonna build him a stylized tree, and I told him many, many times, I am very new to the whole texturing and stylized thing, and he said, it's all good, I just need one. So once again, another skill trade, let's hop into Blender and start on this tree. All right, so the good news is, I told them I don't exactly know what I'm doing yet when it comes to stylized, the bad news is, I don't exactly know what I'm doing yet when it comes to stylized. However, we're gonna make a very low poly version of this tree trunk. And then after that, we're gonna hop over to the sculpting mode and it's probably gonna take me a while. I'm not even gonna lie. We're gonna put this something like this. Maybe have this come in a little bit down here as well. Now guys, uh, skill trading happens literally everywhere, except here on Roblox, for some reason, people just don't do it. And honestly, I think it's one of the best ways to get work done, whether that's work for your game. It's also a great way to build future partnerships. We're gonna make this so, so simple. They want something that they can copy and paste. So I wanna keep it a pretty simple tree, but also not just a normal pine tree because yeah, pine trees that you can't really copy and paste that well. Now we're gonna join all of these together and add a remesh already that's not looking too bad now as you can see this is looking a little bit crazy but that is no problem i'm gonna ho hop into sculpting mode and this this is gonna take me a little while i have so much to learn in this so i think i'll just be back when it's kind of uh better <laughs> when i have some stuff done i am gonna use this grab brush just to add a bit of shape to the tree oh man the grab brush is like so sick it's like proportional editing but better it might even work the same way on the back end i'm not too sure and i also think they want roots throughout the bottom so that's another thing i'm gonna have to add and for that i think i can use snake hook i'll figure it out as i go i'm gonna finish sculpting this it's gonna take a while but when i get back we should have a pretty cool looking mesh all right so this is what i've ended up with at least for now i know there's a lot more stuff i can do with the other brushes but i really don't know it all yet <laughs> so this is a decent start to say the least now we can't exactly put this in a roblox game it has 115,000 triangles so what we did was we used quad remesher and we end up with this which is 2800 triangle now you might be thinking bro the detail is gone all of your sculpting everything it's all bad guys we're gonna bake the high poly mesh maps 
onto this low poly mesh in Substance Painter. So I guess we'll head over there. Uh, it's, oh, I have so much to learn. All right, so now we're in Substance Painter. Once again, a place that I know how to do pretty much nothing. However, I am trying to learn everything because it's just so helpful to know. If we go over here, we can click or bake mesh maps and then we can just grab our file. Now the new versions of Substance Painter, which when I get paid, I definitely plan to upgrade. They just have this one feature that I think would help a lot. So there's this max frontal distance and max rear distance. And I don't overly know where to slide these two. However, on the newer ones, it shows you a blue and a red, we'll call it a map for lack of a better word, and you can visually see where you need to adjust these two. There's probably some sort of thing I could learn, like, hey, if you made it like this, this is how much you adjusted. But guys, when you're learning a new program, anything that can make it slightly easier is always a nice thing. So let's go ahead, bake selected textures, and now check out what this does. We still have our mesh that has 2000 triangles, but it looks like our mesh that has 115,000. Now, all we really have to do is start messing around with these layers, fill layers, color layers, everything like that. For example, let's go ahead and make this like a brown. And just like that, we have a brown tree. But I don't really know how to work off of that, so I am gonna delete it, and I'm going to add a fill layer, I believe this is called. And then if we just change that color to whatever we want, it's gonna automatically change our tree to that. Somewhere around there looks good to me. And now we have a bunch of properties that we can change. I've never seen a shiny tree like this, so we need to up the roughness. As you can see, the shine goes away, the higher the roughness is. I'm thinking somewhere around here. Now there's a bunch more stuff we can do as well and there's so much more for me to learn. But right now I'm gonna add a black mask. Wait, I already messed up. I think you need to make another layer and we're gonna go off of this new layer for the new stuff. So for the base color, I'm gonna copy the previous one, but we're gonna brighten it up, something like that. And now we're gonna add a black mask to this one. And then in that mask, we are going to add, I believe it's a generator and we want curvature. Now check this out. It kind of did the opposite of what I wanted to. We can edit it from here. We're gonna darken this layer back up, increase the roughness as well, and then we're gonna go to our curvature and adjust some sliders so we can have more or less. I think something like this looks at least all right. All we're gonna do now is keep adding more and more layers, generators, it's gonna take me a little bit because like I said, I am still learning this program, but luckily they don't overly care how it looks as long as it looks like a decent stylized tree. All right, um, overall, I don't think it's the worst thing that's ever been made. I'm gonna get this all into studio with some uh, leaves that I've already made and hope that it looks at least decent. I have so much to learn when it comes to sculpting and a lot more to learn when it comes to texturing, but I'm definitely on the journey. And if you guys have any cool video ideas that would revolve around sculpting and substance painter, definitely leave them in the comments below because uh, I just, I wanna do it more. I just also need to make videos. So, you know, we try it out here, but it's gonna be so cool to look back at something like this after I know what I'm doing and be like, dang, that's trash. <laughs> All right, so here is our tree. It is far from perfect. It's definitely a lot, a lot darker than I was hoping for. But uh, once again, there's probably still so much to learn. Like within here, it doesn't look too bad, but that's probably because I didn't put it. Base color looks kind of fire, but I know there's like all this kind of stuff that I don't even really know what it does yet. And there's probably some sort of lighting within Substance Painter that I just also don't know about. So the outcome, yes, definitely darker than I would like. And we do have some weird cuts, stuff like this, which is uh, not exactly perfect, but from a little backed up, I mean, yo, it's not that bad. This side is even darker, which is kind of tragic, but it does look better for the leaf. The main thing making this look absolutely horrible is how bright the leaves are and how dark the trunk is. But honestly, not too sure what I could do about that. The leaves are made forever ago, so their color is, uh, and the trunk, I mean, man, I have one idea. It might be a scuffed idea, but it's an idea. All right, bros, you gotta hear me out here, okay? I'm taking the thing into Photoshop, right? And I'm gonna up the saturation a bit and up, we're not gonna do lightness actually. Let's keep that at zero. Saturation up and this camera raw preset might be a horrible idea, but I'm gonna go for it. Oh my, okay, we're gonna see, we're gonna see. All right guys, this is either about to look better 
or somehow worse than it already does. Here we go, create. Oh yeah, it's it's better. Uh, definitely a bit overkill on some of those colors for sure, and a bit lower quality when you get close, but at least it's brighter. Wow, a lot brighter, dare I say. Maybe a happy middle ground would be something cool. Oh wow, it's, it's better, but it's scuffed. <laughs> All right guys, that's enough of my stylized, um, second day of trying to learn stylized. Let's hop into some questions. Question number one, if your YouTube channel got deleted, would you start a new one or call it quits? I would start a new one. Guys, there's really nothing else I want to do. I want to be a better builder. Would the new channel be about building? I'm not too sure. I'd probably start something that's faceless, maybe even a voice changer, and uh, just see where it goes. But uh, I would definitely start another one. And I wouldn't quit building either. I'd probably just like go ghost from the whole role builder identity and try to build a new building identity. Question number two, what's the most demotivating point you faced in your game making career and how did you cope with it? Uh, a dream game. It was actually quite recently losing a programmer, not one, but two. Now, the most demotivating was the first one who pretty much just scammed your boy out of a thousand dollars. I'm just, eh, it is what it is. Uh, that was the most demotivating because it's like, not only did I lose money, I also lost seven months of time where the whole time it was good in your guys' eyes. Like, hey guys, progress is happening. But in reality, he was just making me wait until the PayPal refund service was over to say he quits. Uh, so that was definitely the most demotivating. But the part that uh, helped me cope, I guess, was the fact that this is my dream game and there's nothing more important than it. So suck it up. It happens. Whatever. Find a new programmer. And uh, here we are. We got Panda now and he's doing absolutely amazing. So I, I can't really complain about too much. The last question for today seems first off long and second off um not a question the bikes definitely need to be much bigger they feel more like toys right now you may think bikes look proportionally correct in relation to the character in terms of height but the wideness blockiness of a character makes the bikes feel very miniature i think they should be scaled up more in both aspects do you plan to change it that was definitely a little bit longer of one personally i never really saw it as a problem i have the blocky character and here I am. Oh my gosh, that's all right. Well, we found a new problem. <laughs> that's a little broken, but uh, this seems pretty all right. The problem we run into when making the bikes even bigger is legs can no longer touch the pegs of the bike, which uh, that's that's kind of horrendous. Secondly, arms can't really reach without being fully bent forward. And it, it doesn't seem like a bad size to me. Like the handlebars are already above my player's shoulders. And I, I don't know. I feel like the even bigger bike would just be even more wacky. So at the moment, I don't, oh my gosh, that's, wow. Wait, I gotta check when you go to scrape the bike. What does it scrape? Is it still that? Oh! <laughs> Honestly, I think the bike sizing right now is pretty good. Uh, I guess I will check with more avatar sizes. I know my guy is pretty short, but we want everyone to be able to use their own avatars instead of us forcing an avatar. So the bike size might feel too small on some, too big on others, and I don't know if there's a happy medium we can find. But if there is, I'm sure we will, and I will see you guys tomorrow.